Hello and welcome to Aspire Church Manchester. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. If you stick around at the end, we'll give you more information about our ministry. But for now, enjoy the preaching. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. As Pastor said, you know, we've known each other for a long, long time. I remember uh, him being in Liverpool and we were in Bolton and traveling to Liverpool and preaching and sometimes back into Manchester and then, liver, you know, different areas we were going. And uh, God was just, uh, you know, it's just great being friends for such a long time and, uh, you know, having that relationship there. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here this morning. And uh, I, I just want to say that a few weeks ago, Pastor Jonathan and myself, we were in uh, um, we were in the States. We went to visit one of the churches there in uh, um, Sacramento, and uh, Pastor Ishmael is the pastor there, and he sends his love. And uh, you know, yes, um, on Friday he phoned me up, and he was just talking, and he says, "Please, you know, tell everyone, uh, you know, we send our love to the people of Manchester. We we love them, and um, I just want to, uh, you know, I, I want to, you know, send that over to you and let you uh, receive, Amen, that love that comes uh, from Sacramento, Amen, and Pastor Ishmael." Mail and the church there. It really was a blessing going there and also being able to go to the men's retreat, which was uh, in Lake Tahoe. And, uh, you know, it was really good. It was cold, <laughs> but, but it was good. It was snowing there. And, uh, but it was really nice just to be a part of that. And one of the blessings was just going in and, uh, you know, to the retreat that was there and uh, having a hundred, over 160 men were there. But they were just really excited about the things of God and uh, really hungry for the things of God. And it was really encouraging just to see that um, Pastor Jonathan and myself, we got up early in the mornings and we would go out for the big breakfast that was there. And, uh, and it really was a, a big, nice breakfast. But you know what? The guys didn't only get up for the breakfast, but they got up and came out and prayed. They were in prayer and they were praying and, you know, and every service we had a service in the morning. We had, a, a, you know, several services there and then again in the evening and uh, every service was packed out. Every service, all the guys were there that were part of the retreat. They were all there. Unless there was one sick or something. But I, I remember the, the services were just packed out. And there were just 160 odd men just praising God. And giving Him glory and honor which He so deserved. And it really encouraged me and stirred my heart uh, just being a part of that. So I want to encourage you that the next time they have a retreat. Uh, uh, I know they have the ladies retreat and men's retreat. You go. If you can go Go and really let, uh, you know, be ministered to and let God minister in your heart. This morning, I want to speak to you from uh, Psalm 63. So if you can open your Bibles with me, Psalm 63. And I just want to read verse 1. The Word of God says there in Psalm 63 and verse 1, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you have given us your word to guide us and to help us uh, as we, Lord, try to serve you and to do your will, Father God. I pray right now that you would uh, just open up our hearts to you, Lord, that we would uh, hear from you, God, that it won't be my words, but your words, God, and that you would encourage the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want to preach a message that I've entitled... Being a passionate pursuer of God. Being a passionate pursuer of God. This morning we need to understand that we need to be passionate in serving God. 
As I said, when I went to this men's retreat, just seeing those men, they were passionate about the things of God. They were rising early and coming out and hearing from God and allowing God to minister in their hearts. And I even, you know, we were asking, guys, where are you from? And they were saying, well, you know, how, how long did it take you to get here? And, the, and they said, well, uh, some of them was eight hours. Some of them said we flew a uh, part of the way and we came and we hired a car and we drove the rest of the way. And I was looking at that and seeing that these guys were passionate about serving God, passionate about doing the things of God. This morning I was on my way to church and, uh, and you know, I was thinking, I got on the motorway and, uh, and it was fine. But when I got to Sheffield, there was like snow. It was just a lot of snow. The motorway was gone down to one lane. We were driving at about 30 miles an hour. And I was like, wow, I don't know whether I can make it. The snow is coming down. And I got here and it's clear and there's nothing here. And I'm like, man... And I was driving through this and I was thinking, you know, I can't go back. I'm talking about being a passionate pursuer of God. So I can't go back. I got to keep going forward. And I was looking and I was thinking, man, you got to be, you know, determined in your heart to do the will of God. And there are times that you feel, man, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can make it. I don't think uh, I can travel down this road. I can keep going. But you know what? If you and I are persistent, God will be there with us and he'll help us. On Census Day, the 21st of March, 2021, it says that 46.2% of people identified themselves as Christians. Compared with 59.3% of the population in the 2011 census. This is a 13% drop in 10 years. It's a 13%. It's over 5 million people who no longer say, I'm a Christian. Who no longer profess to be Christians. And they said that one of the key findings from this was that there was a significant rise in people identifying as no particular faith, of being of no particular faith. That they don't actually believe in anything, or they don't really believe in God, or or they don't have any faith at all. One of the shocking things also that came out was that it said that in six areas of South Wales, Six areas of South Wales, more than 50% of people no longer have any religious belief. Over over 50% of the people there. And you know what shocked me? Because I was thinking this is where the Welsh revival was. This is where the, you know, we, we hear of, of revival and powerful things and you read, uh, you know, Christian history as it were. And you go back and look uh, and you see that this was an area where people would uh, be serving God and would be, uh, you know, radically believe in God and trust in God. And now, uh, you know, in six areas, uh, over 50% of the people no longer has uh, any religious faith as it were no faith that they don't believe in God they now say you know that they have no faith as it were it's sad the word of God says however in Matthew and and this is one of the reasons in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12 and because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold The love of many will grow cold. And you know, as I read this, I understand that sometimes, how many know that as Christians, even as as believers that, you know, that are coming to church and serving God, you know, that sometimes our love starts getting cold. Our love for God. And you know, when your love goes cold for someone, then, you know, you don't want to have anything much to do with them. But you know, and it's the same thing as your love gets cold for God, then we somewhat back off and not so much want to be a part of what God is doing. 
We can't afford this morning for our love to grow cold. I want to look this morning at being passionate. Being passionate. You see, a passionate person has a very strong feeling towards something or a strong belief in something. That person is passionate about that thing. You know, I don't know, you, you probably speak to someone who is passionate about um, football and, uh, and they, don't, don't, they don't stop talking about football. There's some, you know, there's people that are passionate, they're passionate about different things and they just don't stop talking about it. Why? Because that's their passion. And as Christians this morning, we should, you know, as we're passionate about God, you and I should be able to declare His name to others. Passionate people are always focused on what can be rather than what is. Oftentimes we're focused on what is happening and where we're at rather than focusing on what can be. They're always chasing their next goal, something that they can go after. They're like, yeah, and they're, you know, within their heart, they're, you know, they, they believe that they can achieve what they're going for. And I believe as Christians, that needs to be the very same for us, that we need to believe, amen, in God, and we should go after God. And you know what? Heaven is our goal, and you and I should be determined and focused on the fact that heaven is going to be our goal, is our goal. Passion this morning has to do with the heart. It has to do with the heart and how you and I are, our heart is, and where our heart is this morning. And, and you know, as we come into the house of God, and, and just, just we need to examine and see where is our heart? Where is our heart in, in the area of our relationship with God? Where is our heart? You see, the internal fire that motivates us It encourages us to go for God, to carry on doing the things of God. Uh, That that fire that's inside our heart, that the fire that's in our bones that will quicken us and would help us and drive us uh, to do the things of God. Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was, I was weary of holding back. He was weary of holding back. You see what happened for Jeremiah, there, there was like a fire in his bones. There was something there that was stirring him. Jeremiah says, I, he says, I tried to stop speaking in his name. I tried to stop, uh, you, you know... Uh, speaking as it were the things of God or talking out for him. But he says, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that because there was a fire in my bone. The fire was ignited there. And you know what? We need fire igniting in our hearts and in our lives this morning. There was a fire that was there in Jeremiah's heart, in his bone. Will you allow this morning God to ignite that fire in your bones? Will you allow God to ignite that fire? Where we say, I can't hold back. I can't hold back. And Jeremiah tried. He says, you know, I tried to hold back, but I just couldn't. I, and, and I think, you know, when you and I are passionate about something you try to hold back you just can't you just you're so passionate about that thing you know you you, you know someone says will you just be quiet will you just stop talking about it but you just can't why because you're so passionate about those things someone described this fire as a driving enthusiasm that causes you and I to keep going it's, it's just there, that fire that's pushing you and encouraging you that you would keep going, that you would keep fighting, that you would keep battling on. 
This is what God's word does in our heart. It stirs us. It encourages us. It keeps us going there. That we would keep fighting. That we would keep battling. That we would keep doing the things of God. However, things can stop us from being passionate. How many know that there's things that come in our lives that stops us from being passionate? Our love can go cold, and that will stop our passion. That will stop us from being passionate about the things of God. Unconfessed sin. You see, guilt can quickly cause us to lose our passion. Guilt can cause us to lose our passion. We, you know, if we don't come to God and say, God, forgive me of this thing that I've done. Forgive me. Help me to serve you. I, I tell you, guilt can cause you and I to lose our passion. That we're not passionate about God. Why? Because of guilt and we're carrying this burden, carrying this weight. Undisciplined life, that can stop us from being passionate. You know, undisciplined life, things that will come in our lives that will bring us, as it were, a gulf between us and God and our relationship with Him. You know, these, these things can stop us from being passionate. Unresolved conflict can cause us, amen, to lose our passion. I, I, I don't know, it's hard when, you know, you, you come into church and you really want to worship God. But when you think that you have something against someone or whatever, there's a problem there in your life. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard for you to lift your hands. It's hard for you to, uh, you know, freely worship God uh, when there is something, when there's unresolved conflict in your life. And that can stop you and I from being passionate and can, uh, you know, kill our passion as it were. See, what happens is that the enemy wants to stop us from being passionate. People are passionate about all kinds of things. They, They are so passionate. And, you know, one of the things that I've realized is how, you know, the law, you know, different laws have changed. And, and the reason why these laws have changed is because there are people that were there that were passionate that wanted to see those laws change. And some of them aren't for good. Some of them are terrible laws. Some of them are bad things that are happening. You know, I was, we were in the States and uh, we were going to Pastor uh, Ishmael's church. He was taking us to church. And on the way there, we were, we were driving along and Pastor Jonathan says, Phew, that smell, what is it? He says, man... That's marijuana. It's, it's the, just the stench is so strong. And, and the pastor says to us, oh, yeah, he says, you see that those, those pallets over there, all those shell, those things, the, the fork truck is taking those pallets around. He says it's full of marijuana. And he says, that, you know, it's legal here now that, you know, you can go, they can buy it in the shops. And, you know, he was saying, is it legal in England? And I says, oh, no, it's not legal in England. And he says, and, and, and I was thinking, you know what? There are people that are passionately trying to change the laws. And you and I sometimes don't realize that. And that these things will just come in. And, 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 and you're, you know, you, you're like, wow. When did this happen? We look at Ireland and, you know, the... Uh, the um, uh, the abortion law just changed and, you know, we, people hardly realized or noticed uh, how quickly things had changed. I was reading a magazine, uh, a Christian magazine, and it was saying that in Florida there's, a, a, you know, a school that uh, have taken some of the children out on field trip uh, and they've took them to gay bars to show them what it's like. And, you know, the, we're, the people, you know, sometimes these are people that are passionate. People are passionate about all kinds of things. Said that there are people that are passionately trying to change the law that you don't call pedophiles pedophiles anymore. But they are, oh, I forgot the word, but they are more that they, you know, that, they're, that they like children. And, uh, you know, you should accept that. 
And um, this is just how sick the world has become. But people are passionate about those things. Are we passionate about Christ? Are we passionate about the things of God? There are people that are passionate about learning and they'll be, they study. And, I, you know, it's great. It's good that we are doing that. They're passionate. They, they, you know, I remember my kids, you know, they're, they're studying. They would be up late at night. They'll be early. I'll be going out at work. I, I get up at 3.30 in the morning, and they'll be still there. I, I left them going to bed. They were studying. Get up, and they were still doing it. And they were passionate about, you know, studying and getting their degree. they are people that are passionate about helping They just want to help. Have you ever seen people like that? They're just passionate. They want to help, and they'll do anything. They'll just like, oh, can I help you? Can I, you know, I want to help. And, you know, how they can help. They're doing a charitable work and doing all kinds of things, and they're willing to step out and give up their time. They give up their money, but they're willing to help. There are people that are passionate about health and fitness, like me. I knew you would laugh at me. (laughs) But there are people that are passionate about health and fitness. And it's good that, you know, we are passionate about these things. There are people that are passionate about work. And they'll be working, you know, every hour that they can. And they're passionate about their job. And they'll talk about their job. They'll, they'll, they'll you know, when they come home, they, 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 it's about work. And, you know, then they go out. And, you know, they're, they're talking about work. They're so passionate about their jobs. There are people that are passionate about their pets and, uh, you know, they're very, you know, they love their pets. And, you know, they, they, their, their pets, you know, they'll talk, they're always talking about their pets. Why? Because they're passionate about them. I was in uh, Nottingham the other day, and uh, I was walking past the, 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 uh, this cafe, and uh, um, uh, this little girl, she said to her mother, Mom, why is it called a cat cafe? And he says, she says, well, there are cats in there. You know, people, uh, they love cats, so they like to be around them. And people are passionate about all kinds of things. But I wonder this morning if we could channel some of that passion into pursuing God. That we would channel some of that passion that we have. Uh, you know, that we love this and we, uh, we're going after that. But would we just channel some of that passion into pursuing God. It's very important that we would. There's also passion killers this morning. How many know there's passion killers? In John chapter 12 and verse 3, we see Mary comes and she anoints Jesus' feet with this expensive oil. And she then wipes his feet with her hair. And what happened was that for her, it was, uh, she, uh, she was so passionate about God. She was so passionate about Jesus. She loved him. And she was willing to use this expensive oil and uh, to use her hair and to, you know, just dry his feet. And what happened was that the disciples weren't happy about it. Passion killers. <laughs> See, Judas started getting angry about it, and he was like, you know, well, this could be sold and used for, for other reasons. No, you wanted it for yourself, Judas. But you know what happens is that there are passion killers. There are people that want to kill your passion. I remember many, many years ago, the first time I came into this fellowship, I, I, I was going to another church, and uh, the church that I was going to, the, the, you know, I found myself that I wasn't really serving God. I was just going backwards and backwards, and I, I really wanted to, you, you know, be, be you know, stirred and to uh, be encouraged to serve God. And I remember coming to this church and being a part of this church. And I, I remember the very first few service I went to, and, uh, and then I told the guys that I was with that were in the, uh, the, the church that I was going to, and he, they said, oh, you'll soon lose, you know, you, you, you won't be like that forever, you know. Basically, uh, you know, the excitement that I had, 
the zeal. I was like, wow, uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, the people are serving God. They were praising God. They were worshiping God. I'm excited about it. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you will pass. You won't always be like that. They're passion killers. And this morning, as you and I try to live for God, there are people that will try to kill your passion for God. Whether it's your family, uh, you know, sometimes it's your own, uh, you know, your loved ones, the people that are close to you, they'll try to kill your passion. Losing focus can also kill your passion. Where you just lost focus of where you're going and what you're doing. And there's often times as Christians, we can lose focus. We can just lose focus. We, you know, at one time we knew where we was going. We knew what we were doing. We knew where we were heading. We knew, you know, the determination and the desire that was in our hearts. But then uh, it comes a point when we have just lost focus. Other things have just pulled us aside and pulled us away and distracted us, as it were. And we lose focus on God. Opposition can cause us to lose focus. You know, when people oppose you and you're being opposed, you can lose focus. Because of, you know, constantly being opposed, you're thinking, man, is it worth it? Uh, You know, what am I bothering? You know, people, uh, you know, don't want to see you. You know, at work, people are always there trying to see. Oh, Dave, just, man, you never swear. (laughs) And they're trying to do everything. Just to see, oh, they, 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 they just want that day to see Dave swear. That he could go, he'll go all around the factory. Dave, he was swearing. I, I got him swearing. And they do all whatever they can and all kinds of things just to try and to kill your passion. To stop you from doing what God wants you to do. Being negative can also kill your passion. You see, well, you know, people being negative about you, or you being negative about yourself. How many know that many times we are negative about us? We look in the mirror, and we're negative about ourselves. And, and, and what happens is that it kills our passion. It's a passion killer. Lack of faith can be a passion killer. At one time you trusted God, you believed God. God will help me. I can get through this. I know I can. I'm determined to keep serving God. And then, you know, all of a sudden we lose faith and we're no longer as focused, no longer as trusting in God as we used to trust Him. See, there are many things that will kill our passion. I, I'll just watch, in, uh, some of you probably have been watching the World Cup and, uh, uh, and you know, the, the, the matches that have been played. And one of the things that came to me was that um, for some of the teams that went there, they were just glad to qualify for the World Cup. They were just glad we qualified, we got there. And that was enough for them. You know, great, we got to the World Cup and we qualified. But then I look and there was others that are there and they're determined we've come for the cup. We won the cup. We're going to get the cup. We're taking that home. And for some of them, you know what happens? Because they failed, you see them on the ground just crying, on the ground broken. Why? Because they failed from doing what they wanted to do. They were passionate about it. They wanted to win the World Cup. They wanted to take it home. They wanted to say to their country, this, look, we went and we played and we won the World Cup. They're passionate. We need to have the same passion for the things of God. You see, we rob ourselves of passion when we fear the perception of people. You know, we, we, we know what they think about us. When, when, when we, you know, even sometimes when we come to church, you, you sort of, what are people going to think if I raise my hands? <laughs> you know, when I first got saved for years, it took me a while to raise my hands. I was like, praise the Lord. 
And I, I was, you know, I was like, I was scared of, you know, raising my hand. Even though I grew up in a church where they were, you know, getting excited and jumping and shouting oh, and everything for God. I was now, when I, I'm getting get saved, and I'm uh, scared of raising my hand. What happens is that we can worry about the perception of others, what people think about us. What are they going to say? The second thing I want to look at is pursuing God. We need to pursue. We need to go after the things of God. The psalmist says in Psalm 63 and verse 1, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. He says, early will I seek you. He says, God, you're my God. You're my God. You're everything to me. And what happened was that the psalmist was saying that, you know, it was showing the fact that he had an intimate relationship with God. There was a closeness between him and God. He was saying, God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. In the morning, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to go after you. This morning, this needs to be the very same in our hearts. God, early I'm going to rise. I'm going to seek your face. Early I'm going to seek you. I'm going to go after you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do your will. I'm going to live in obedience to you. The pursuit of God... It, come, it needs to start right here in our heart. That we would have a desire for Him. And once we have a desire for Him, then we're going to pursue Him. You see, you, know, you see something and you like it, you want to go and buy it, and, and you, you're determined, you're like, wow. And that desire starts in your heart and you start pursuing. How, I, how can I get it? How can I you know, buy this thing? Man, I'm going to have to save but you, you're determined and you start saving. Why? Because you, you're pursuing that thing. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, the apostle is saying, you know, hey, for me to live, it's Christ. It's, it's, it's all about God. It's all about living for God and doing His will and being obedient to Him. You know, there's other things that would come, but you know, the main thing that is in His life was that He wanted to serve God. He wanted to do the will of God. We need to set our hearts and mind on the things of God. You, you know, it's, it, many times our hearts can be distracted, our, 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 you know, our goals can change, but our hearts need to be on the things of God. We need to make a conscious decision that my heart is going to go for God. These guys at the World Cup, they're saying, I'm going for the World Cup. I'm going for the Cup. That, that's your desire. David's choice was to serve God. He says, he purposed in his heart, God, you're my God. You're my God. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you. You mean everything to me. Pursuing God should be our desire. Pursuing God should be our goal. It should be, you know, our focus. God, I want to go after you. I don't want anything to hold me back. The heart of the pursuer is on God. Your heart should be on God. You're pursuing Him. You're going after Him. Your goal is to make heaven your home. David chose to pursue God. That's a good choice. You see, David was an amazing boy. He grew up and, uh, and he worked hard. And he was working as a shepherd boy. And how many know being a shepherd wasn't an easy job? It was a boring job. It was a lonely job. 
He was out there in the field. He was on his own and it was boring. He was on his own and he was just there. And for us, sometimes we're in boring jobs and, and, and those boring jobs, we just, we're just trying to pass the time and pass those days. But you know, for David, uh, while he was on that boring job, uh, just passing those times, uh, he didn't just, just pass a few hours, pass a few days, uh, pass a few years, uh, but he used that time uh, just to uh, pursue God. Uh, in writing psalms and hymns and songs. You know, he was probably out there singing the things, singing about God, worshiping God, because he didn't just want to pass time. He didn't just want, oh, well, you know, it's so boring. I, I just, I hate this job. I work with some guys, and, you know, I've been there over 25 years, and, and, and they've been mourning from day one. I hate this job. I don't know, I'm, I just want to, I'm going to leave. You said that 25 years ago, you're still here. I've had enough of this place. And what happened is that, you know, they're just passing the time. But you know, maybe that job is boring, but you know what? You need to still pursue God in those times. Man, God, man, sometimes I'm walking around the factory and, I, and, and, and it's not the most exciting job that I'm in. But I, I'm sometimes, uh, you know, just walking around and I'm, I'm praising God in my heart and I'm worshiping God. And I'm singing songs. And I'm preaching to people, to myself. Amen. And, and those people there don't know how many sermons have been preached over them, how many songs have been sung over them, how many prayers have been prayed over them. Them, but I'm pursuing God. In the time people are coming up to me, Dave, what should I do? Can I do that? Yeah, you go over there, do that, do this. And I'm just like carrying on. I'm just praising God, worshiping God, giving Him honor and giving Him glory. And you know what? Not just passing the time, but pursuing God in that time. And this morning, it's very, it's true that you and I can pursue God in the time, you know, that we live in. And even, it might be a boring job. It might not be the most exciting thing that you're doing in your life. But pursue God. That's an exciting thing, to pursue God. But David focused his heart on God. You see, even though he was going through, you know, he was just like, man, I, uh, you know, people would probably think, man, being a shepherd, going out there, you know, you see how cold it was this morning. You know, probably he was out there, it was cold, it was hot. He was going through all these things. But he didn't mourn and complain about that. He pursued God. He pursued God. You see, David went forward, even as a king, he still pursued God. And, and sometimes, you know, we pursue God when we, you know, when things are hard, but things start getting better and we're doing good and we stop pursuing God. We're like, well, I'm good and I'm all right now. I'm comfortable. I'm, I, I, I don't, I, but we need to still pursue God. We need to pursue God. Our hearts need to be on God and on the things of God. To seek his face needs to be the most important thing for any Christians. Oh God, you are my God. When you are going through it, you need to say, God, you're my God. Oh God, just read Psalm 63 and just look up to heaven and say, oh God, you're my God. You're my God. You're so good to me. I trust you. I want to serve you. I want to do your will. We need to seek his face. Do you seek God's face? When you're going through it, do you seek his face? Do you turn to him and say, oh God, you're my God? Because sometimes when we're going through it, we forget who God is. We forget to seek his face. The person who seeks after God will be satisfied. The person who goes for the things of God will be satisfied. Being a passionate pursuer of God is one of the best things that you can do. Just being passionate about the things of God. 
We're passionate about many things, but being passionate about the things of God is very important in our lives. And this is something that we need to go after, is being passionate about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He loves us, He cares for us, and He died for us. When I was in the States, one of the, well, several brothers and sisters came to me and said, Pastor Dave, how do you do it? I said, your wife passed away recently. How do you do it? And I, 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 I said, well, I, I, you know, the first person that asked me, I was like, I didn't know what to say. I was like, well, you know, I said, I've been serving God for so many years. And I said, there's, uh, there's the resources that you've, that's there that you can draw from. That you can, you know, you, you have a relationship with God. You can turn to him. And you can trust him and you can see him minister in your life. And I says, you know, because if I didn't have that relationship with God, right now it would be very hard. It would be a, it would be a struggle. And, and it's, I'm not saying it is, it's easy. And then other people ask me and I, Start thinking, you know, God, how do you give me the strength that I have? And then my neighbor said to me, he says, Dave, I, they, Pastor Tom and different ones who come to my house know where I live. So my neighbors, I have to walk past their houses. And one of my neighbor, he said to me, he says, Dave, my wife and I, we sat at the window and we looked out. And they said, we see you going to church. See you going to church every week. And he said, I said to my wife, when your wife passed away, that's a hard journey for Dave. That's a hard journey. It is a hard journey. But you know what? I'm a passionate pursuer of God. I'm a passionate pursuer of God. And this morning, when you're a passionate pursuer of God, when you're going through it, you still want to keep going. You still want to keep going. You don't want to stop. And I said, you know, there's many times, you know, I'm coming to church and I'm crying. I'm going home, but I'm pursuing God. I'm pursuing God, and he gives me the strength. We need to be passionate pursuers of God. Let's give God praise and glory this morning. Glorify you, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, O God. Praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glorify your name, O Savior. As we bow our heads this morning in reverence to the Lord. I know he's in this place this morning. Maybe you're here and you're not saved or you're watching online and you're not saved. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because this morning you say, you know what? I want to accept Christ as my Lord, as my Savior. I'm tired of carrying this sin around, the things that I'm doing. I I want to change the way I'm living. And I want to live for God. If that's you this morning, you're here or you're online and you're watching, would you... Just raise your hand and say, Pastor, will you pray for me? If that's you, I'd love to pray with you. Hallelujah. If not, we're just going to move along with the service. But if that's you, would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? I don't know Jesus. I'm not saved. I want to serve God. Would you do that? 
or if you're watching online, I want to pray with you this morning. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Help me to serve you to do your will. Forgive me. Give me strength to serve you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I'm talking to Christians about being a passionate pursuer of God. David says, oh God, you are my God. And if God is your God this morning, then you need to be passionate about him. There are passion killers that will try to kill your passion. There are things that will come in your life that will stop, try to stop you from being passionate about the things of God. But as I shared with you, one of the reasons I received strength from God is because I am passionate about him. And God has shown his love and his grace and his mercy. How passionate this morning are you towards God and towards the things of God? Maybe this morning as you heard the words, you might say, well, you know what, I want to be more passionate. I want to be more passionate than I have been. I I really want to just go all out for God and give him my all. I don't want to hold back. Oh God, you are my God. I want to serve you. I want to do your will. If this morning you need prayer in any way, shape, or form, I want to pray with you this morning. The altars are open. I'm not going to prolong the service, but I want to ask you, if you think, God, I want to be more passionate. And this morning, I'm one of those. I want to be more passionate. I'm not, you can't be too passionate about God. I want more of God. I want to be more passionate. As you say, God, help me to be more passionate about you and and sometimes we, we, we might be scared because we think, man, it's going to take my time. It's going to take my finances. It's going to take up different things in my life. But you know what? Being passionate about God is worth it. It's worth being passionate about the things of God and trusting God and allowing Him to help you. There are passion killers that want to kill your passion. And maybe at one time you were really passionate. But different things have come to try to kill your passion. But this morning you'd say, I'm not going to allow anything to kill my passion. To stop me from being passionate about God and about the things of God. Let's pray this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for everyone at the altar this morning, God, as... They seek to be more passionate about you, Lord, that your hand would be upon them, that you would strengthen, Lord, uh, that you would do a mighty, powerful work in their lives. Uh, God, we bind every strategy, every plan of Satan. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray, God, uh, that the Lord, that fire would be in their hearts right now. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, God, that your Holy Spirit uh, would be upon them. Uh, God, that you would bring guidance, uh, Lord, that you would bring strength. Uh, we come against every plan, every strategy of Satan right now. Lord, for your hand upon us. God, for your spirit to guide us. Uh, Lord, that we would be obedient to you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God, let that fire, let that fire ignite in our hearts this morning. God, that we would continue steadfast uh, in doing your will, Father God, uh, in living in obedience to you, Father. We come against uh, the works of Satan. 
God, we pray for your guidance. We pray for your power. Help each and every one, every family that is represented here this morning. God, that you'll move in their homes, that you'll move in their lives. God, that there will be a passion, that there will be the power of God in their hearts and in their homes and in their lives. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise you right now. Let's give God praise. Let's give him glory. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, mighty God. You are worthy, Lord. We praise and magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Glorify your name. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise God. Passionate pursuers of God. Praise God, Pastor Tom. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us today at Aspire Church. If the message today has blessed you, or there's something we can help you with, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email to info at aspirechurch.co.uk. We meet in different locations throughout the week, and if you'd like to join us in person, we'd love to have you visit us. You can find all the details on our website at www.aspirechurch.co.uk or if you'd like further information, find us on Facebook, look us up on Twitter. We also live stream all of our services and once again, if you'd like to view online, you can find all the details on our website. Thank you for joining us today, being part of our ministry. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. God bless you.